Yeah, good morning. It's a pleasure to share with you now our scientific discoveries. And I will start with an overview about our scientific documentations as well as the publications. So our research journey began in 2016 where we um, did a one-year observational study. The aim of this study was to document the safety, the health improvement, and the well-being of these participants. And we successfully recruited almost 2,000 patients. After that, we did an interventional study in collaboration with the CNRS team in Strasbourg. And we investigated we investigated the effects of long-term fasting on the relevance of muscle and protein loss in 16 healthy men. Um, in the so-called lipobuvi study, we focused on the lipoprotein metabolism. And after that, we did a detox study in collaboration with Professor Coretas from Greece and Professor Zeralini in Caen. In 2019, we also did our first observational study here in Mabea. This one was unexpectedly interrupted by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. And after a short, ga um, short gap, we then started to document the cases of patients who had long COVID and who came to the clinics too fast. In 2021, we did the most complex study we have done so far. The aim of this study was to document the body composition of 32 participants before and after fasting, as well as one and four months afterwards. And to document the body compos composition, um, we had to travel to Saint-Étienne, where the MRI device of our partners was located. So, and in total, our research team had to travel more than 18,000 kilometers for this study. Last year, we focused on the halitosis, so on bad breath symptoms, as well as the composition of the oral microbiota. And recently, this summer, we did our first randomized controlled trial, and um, we investigated the effects of the fasting box, so with this five-day um, low-calorie ketogenic diet that can be done at home. And on the basis of all these studies, we published so far 17 research articles. And our breakthrough came in 2019, where we published the world's largest fasting study, documenting the safety, health improvement, and well-being in a large cohort of 1,422 subjects. So we have accumulated a huge data treasure, and further publications will come soon. Let's now dive into the research findings. And the Buchinger Wilhelmi program is minimally supplemented, leading to a calorie intake of 70 to 250 kilocalories per day. And it is obviously that this leads to changes in body weight. And as you can see here, the weight loss is time dependent and stronger in men than in female. In the 60-man study, we investigated the weight loss composition. And in total, they lost 5.9 kilograms. And these were composed out of 2.36 kilogram fat, half a kilogram glycogen, 1.6 kilogram bound water, and 1.5 kilogram metabolically active tissue. And these proteins were mainly derived from old and damaged cells. And we further found out that this protein loss occurred mainly in the first phase of the fasting and decreases as soon as the ketogenesis increases. And an important finding in this study was further that the muscle performance and the strength was maintained. In the large cohort of 1,610 subjects, uh, we saw that fasting normalizes high blood pressure values. And um, this is applicable for hypertensive subjects with and without blood pressure medication. 
and among them who had a blood pressure medication, two thirds of them could reduce or even stop the drug intake. The non-normotensive ones stayed in norm range, and we saw in a small subgroup of mainly female persons who had very low initial baseline levels that the blood pressure was increased. Though in total, this really um, points out that fasting could be a very promising non-pharmacological and complementary approach to treat high blood pressure. In the blood, we documented the metabolic switch, so the body switches to ketosis. Glucose levels and insulin levels decrease to the lower norm, and fa free fatty acids as well as beta hydroxybutyrate increase because they are used as fuels. And as soon as the food is reintroduced, shown by this little line, um, the switch back occurs, which is followed by an important phase of regeneration. And our PhD student Marie will focus on this important phase during her um, thesis. We further documented that the LDL cholesterol, as well as the three glycerides, decreased during fasting. And we saw a long-lasting effect up to three months afterwards. And in a further study, we focused on the lipoprotein subclasses and saw that the most atherogenic one, the small dense LDL, was decreased by 30% after 14 fasting days. And this is so beneficial because the small dense LDL can penetrate the arterial walls and lead there to inflammation and plaque building. So this really shows the cardiovascular benefits. Another topic are chronic liver diseases. And 65% of the adult obese persons have a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And this is closely linked to insulin resistance. We documented the fatty liver index, which is a surrogate marker for a fatty liver. And as you see, fasting significantly decreases the fatty liver index by 14 points. And this means that the number of persons who have a diagnosis of fatty liver, according to this index, decreased from 260 to 120. On the right side, you see old microscopic images, which also visualize um, the decrease or even the disappearance of the um, liver fat content. So fasting further increases the total antioxidant capacity, so the ability of the body to fight against oxidative stress. And in parallel, it decreases the lipid damages reflected by the parameter T-bars. And one important component of the total antioxidant capacity is the uric acid. And you might know that uric acid increases during fasting and sometimes above the norm range, but it's not linked to side effects. So this points out to the important function of uric acid as antioxidant. During the observational study, we continuously documented side effects. And the most frequent mild symptoms were sleep disturbances, fatigue, dry mouth, and back pain. These mild symptoms mainly occurred in the first day of the fasting during the metabolic switch. And adverse events were documented only in less than 1% of this large cohort. To the astonishment of many, um, fasting persons don't feel hungry. And this is a very important fact for the compliance of the participants. Next to the safety and the tolerability, fasting also increases the value, uh, well-being, as you can see here on a daily basis. And it further also increases the relaxation levels. Physical activity is an important component of the Buchinger Wilhelmi program. And we documented that the patients do three times more physical activity during their stay here than at home. 
Yeah, it can be easily assumed that a lifelong practice of fasting would have beneficial effects. And we have here the perfect example. It's our champion. He's 92 years old and he fasted 21 days every year for 45 years. And in addition, he did a low calorie diet every fall. So he's in good health status. He has excellent cognitive abilities, um, good mobility and no frailty. And you see here his um, weight curve. He lost an average seven kilogram per fasting stay. And the weight curve has a very stable baseline level. There is one exception which uh, occurred due to occupational stress and it's symbolized by this thunder symbol. Yeah, and in the smaller graph, um, you see his cholesterol levels in his 70s, and you don't see here an age-dependent increase of the levels. And finally, I will show you now the results of our case series. Um, we documented the effects of long-term fasting in 14 um, long COVID patients, and we asked them retrospectively as well as prospectively retrospectively during the acute phase, as well as prospectively before and after fasting, how they felt. And we found, uh, in general, an improvement of the health status reflected here by the index score as well as in visual scale. And we further asked for their main symptoms, and the most uh, frequent ones were fatigue and breathlessness, and both uh, improved very well. Further symptoms we documented were muscle pain, joint pain, cognitive impairments, as well as smell and taste disorders, and all of them improved. So it's, uh, these results suggest that fasting could be very promising um, to recover from long COVID symptoms. And this might be very beneficial now when COVID seems to come back. Okay. So. <laughs>